Okay, uh, we're now beginning uh, the conversion of the RX200 over to a DNA200. Um, and um, so that, okay. Uh, it's a box that um, they provide the chip in. You know, I think this should be coming even further. Um, so this is um, the magical, mythical uh, DNA 200 chip. Um, and the anatomy of it is um, not all that different from um, from the Joytech board that we had uh, just pulled out. Um, you can see at the bottom here, these are for bounce leads. Um, the, uh, um, uh, Evolve has a schematic and if you can see how they want, they want individual leads going everywhere uh, to the battery sled. Um, Let's even pan out far enough for um, uh, and for equal length uh, uh, bounce leads, uh, four of them. Um, but we can get away with two um, if you want to be really um, OCD about it. You you'll want to do four equal length, but um, uh, you're going to have a hell of a time fitting the wires uh, into this mod. Uh, as big as it is, it's actually pretty tightly packed. Um, so what we're going to end up doing is um, what uh, what Wismec did with their boards and um, we are going to jumper these two that, that are to the um, positive and negative ends of the battery uh, and um, which means we're, we're going to end up only using two balance leads uh, and uh, when I first did these I was running both a positive battery and negative battery wire um and then i uh, after doing some thought um this ground strap is um this is actually sufficient and according to um evolve uh these three grounding points um they are actually sufficient um, to ground the board completely to the chassis. So, want to take advantage of that and um, save some um, save some wiring. So, uh, that's the board. Um, this is how the screen comes. And let's set that aside. Um, here we have a uh, flat uh, Veritube um, V1 which I've, I've unscrewed this because I'm about to solder some uh, 14 gauge wire to that. Um, we need this to attach it to the chassis. Um, and uh, I think I mentioned before I do not use a negative ground wire uh, from this um, and uh, there's a very clear reason why and um, yeah. that will become evident uh, once we get to the next step alright um, let's get this light going again um, so we're going to have to cut a 
10 millimeter hole, which is uh, just big enough for this to go through. Um, it's obviously uh, not big enough to go through uh, now. Um, in addition to that, uh, modifications to the chassis. Um, and I kind of marked it out with a sharpie. Um, that part has to be ground away. Um, but only up to about there. Or um, these uh, notches. Man, my finger is too fat. Getting in the way. Um, you know. Maybe level with this, that that's as far as you need to cut, because all you need to do is create enough clearance um, for that to be able to uh, rotate freely, okay? Uh, so we're going to Dremel that out, and then we're going to drill a hole into here, uh, and then we're going to... Um, we're going to sand that smooth um, and uh, through um, past experience we're going to want to start with this first. Uh, if you drill first um, you'll get through the top but then it'll start catching on this right here and then um, unless you have this firmly mounted in a vise um, uh, it'll rip it out of your hand. Uh, so um, I'm going to go ahead and do that. Uh, do the Dremel work and um, I'll be back uh, with the hopefully well done finished product.